And as you might guess, based on the way we started the show, we're going to begin with some 49ers and some news around them. They, they have a receiver dilemma, okay? And what I mean by that is Brandon Ayuk wants a new deal. He isn't at camp. So as Ayuk holds out, you wonder if there's a way to pay everyone. Devo Samuel's deal is up in 2025. Ayuk added some fuel to the contract negotiation fire. He said this to his former Arizona State teammate, Jaden Daniels. 50 count. <laughs> He got me vlogging this Bro, what? <laughs> they said they, ain't, they said they don't want me back. I swear. <laughs> okay, if you're trying to decipher, that was like a FaceTime call with Jaden Daniels that was recorded, but either way, he's saying they said they didn't want him back. Here's a look at the Niners skill players. Even if something happens with Ayuk, they still have a lot of great playmakers in Devo Samuel, Christian McCaffrey, and George Kittle. They also added wideouts Ricky Pearsall and Jacob Cowing in the draft this year. But Adam, let's go right to you. What more can you tell us about the contract talks between Brandon Ayuk and San Francisco? Well, Laura, unless the 49ers stance has changed suddenly, dramatically, and unexpectedly, that statement would be completely false because Having spoken to the Niners multiple times, multiple Niners people throughout the course of the offseason, every single one of them said they wanted Brandon Ayuk back. It was a priority. I think what Brandon Ayuk is saying here is that their contract offer says to me that they don't want me back because the wide receiver market has exploded recently. We've seen Justin Jefferson come in $35 million a year. We've seen... Uh, A.J. Brown coming north of $30 million a year. We've seen Jalen Waddle come in $28 million a year. We've seen big guaranteed money. And the Niners and Brandon Ayuk have been unable to reach a long-term contract agreement. And while they've had these talks, the prices of wide receivers only has risen to the point where it doesn't seem like there's been recent contract talks because talks have been at a stalemate. So mm -hmm. when Brandon Ayuk says they don't want me there, that's just not true. They absolutely do want him there. They just don't want him there at the price that he's looking for right now as the two sides try to reach a common ground on a long-term deal. Yeah, Shefty's on the mark there in terms of finding that spot for Brandon Ayuk in this very complicated and robust and rich wide receiver market, Laura. But the other problem that San Francisco 49ers are facing right now is a great problem to have. We've got all this world-class talent. Yeah. As of right now, the 49ers have seven players who are making at least $15 million per season. That's tied for the most of any team in the entire NFL. When you're really good, you got to make difficult business decisions. And oh, by the way, next year, assuming Brock Purdy plays like he has so far, he's going to be making more than $55 million per season. At some point, these difficult choices arise for the teams at the very top of the heap of the NFL. I don't love to always sit here and compare teams to the Kansas City Chiefs, but we're just a couple of off seasons removed from them trading away Tyreek Hill, a right. first team all pro wide receiver. Right. So for San Francisco, mm -hmm. it's not simply Brandon Ayuk. It's the idea that every dollar they pay to one player is one less dollar to pay to somebody else. It's a puzzle they're currently navigating. Well, and as we back. OK, so first off, the Kansas City Chiefs example holds no relevance here um, because you're talking about potentially um, the greatest quarterback of all time combined with the greatest head coach of all time. So you can get away with that. And the greatest tight end of all time. And as great as the 49ers are with their weapons, with Christian McCaffrey and Kittle and Purdy and all of that, it's a di and Shanahan, it's a different, just a different situation. Um, so let, let's just, let's just tap on the brakes uh, a, a little bit here. So here's, here's the thing. What Brandon Ayuk is doing is just, so immature and absurd it's just not how you conduct business okay it's just bad business especially if the 49ers genuinely want him and now he's essentially telling the world hey the 49ers don't want me back that's something that's just going to drive them crazy and if they were trying to figure out who to move on from whether they have to move on from someone right because there is that kind of uh, that discussion of, of whether or not they're going to have to try to move Debo and keep Ayuk. Like, those are the little things where you're just like, all right, whatever, man. We're going to move Ayuk and we're going to keep Debo, right? Like, we're going to ship you off to, to New England. Congratulations. You're going to get your money and you're just going to be irrelevant for years to come. Congratulations. You have backup quarterbacks throwing to you. Good job. And, and a coach who 
you, we don't even know if he's a, a real head coach or not. Good job. You just found yourself out of one of the best, most elite organizations in the history of the NFL and even currently in the San Francisco 49ers in this massive, massive fan base and massive, massive market, as well as one of the greatest coaches, um, one of the greatest offensive minds, and definitely the one of the greatest current coaches in the NFL, right? One of the top coaches, offensive coaches. You're in a paradise right now, and you have all these other weapons around, um, you know, on the offense that only makes your job easier, will only make you look better. So again, congratulations. And, and I just, I just think it's just absurd what Hayuk is doing. And I've said a similar, you know, a kind of a similar thing about Micah Parsons, where it's like, if you want to be a winner, if you want to get paid. Prove to the 49ers, you've already proved what you can do on the field, but now prove the other stuff. Prove that you can be a man, that you can be mature, that you can be honest and genuine, that you can be a good ambassador for the 49ers, that you can represent the franchise and the organization in a positive manner, because that's partly what you're getting paid for. Not to mention, if you want the maximum amount of money, when you do those things, it makes the people in power want to pay you that money. A lot of times, that is the difference maker. That's why certain quarterbacks get a million second chances, even as backup quarterbacks, and other quarterbacks are just like, nah, we're good. It's personality. It's who you are, how you relate to other people. Are you building bridges or are you burning bridges? And so this is just like, like, what are we talking about? He's like posting videos and, and, and he's filming himself talking to someone else. I mean, like, this is Antonio Brown type nonsense. And how did that work out for him? So I, I just think like, and, and we always give some grace to these wide receivers for them being, you know, kind of divas. And I get it, right? They don't have to be as calm, cool, and collected as, say, a quarterback. And I get it. And not to mention the 49ers are established enough of an elite franchise with Shanahan and Purdy and Kittle and Christian McCaffrey that they can absorb these, you know, a more diva type relationship, like even like a Micah Parsons for that matter. But it's still just bad. Like I'm just looking at it. If I was in on uh, in Ayuk's camp, I would be like, bro, don't do that. The only thing you should be saying is, I want to be a 49er for life. I'm so excited. I love everything. I think we can truly win a Super Bowl here, and I can't wait to be part of it. You know, I just want to get paid what I deserve, right? Like, if you have to say something publicly, but it's probably better to say nothing publicly at that regard, except for I just love the 49ers and I want to keep playing with them. You know, don't even bring up the whole money and that you want to get paid what you deserve. Let let that all happen behind the scenes. So it's just it's just a, it's just a bad look for a lot of these players that are looking for deals, quite frankly. Um, and I just don't think it's the way you go about doing it. Not to mention, look at how the other wide receivers currently who got paid lots of money, look how they're dealing with it and look how they got paid. Did they do this whole song and dance? They did not. They, they, they did not. So it just seems like Ayuk is, is potentially overplaying his hand and listen, maybe the 49ers find a way and they do pay him and they maybe move on from Debo. Maybe they find a way how to keep everyone. I don't know. I'm not a salary cap expert, and um, so I'm not going to pretend to be one. But I, I just, the one thing that I am confident is that Ayuk needs the 49ers more than the 49ers need Ayuk. They have Shanahan. They have Purdy. They have Debo. They have Kittle. They have Christian McCaffrey. They have Pearsall. They have it. They got it. They've been winning without you, and they will win with you. So it, they don't need you. But better believe they can chip you off to no man's land. And again, maybe you get paid, and that's great. You were always going to get paid no matter what. But do you want to win? And if you don't want to win, then I'm not so sure I want you on that team. Which, again, is easier said than done because you every NFL team is going to have players that care more about the money than winning. And that's okay. That's just life, right? There's a lot of – I mean, that makes sense. Marcellus Wiley talked about this, this, you know, an ex-NFL player where he was like, 
I cared more about making as much money as I could than winning Super Bowls because I need money, okay? I grew up poor. I grew up in Compton. Like, I need money. I want to make as much money as I possibly can. And that makes total sense, honestly, and totally understandable. I get it. But when you have the roster and the culture of the 49ers, you don't necessarily need that. You don't need to absorb that player that could potentially cause issues down the road because apparently he had already you know as soon as the season was over he was already like requesting a trade like he's just already been kind of goofy that i just don't know um where that goes you know you 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 want someone who's gonna be with you in the trenches right someone who's who's gonna go through that adversity and right now it's just like i'm not so sure but again i get it because he wants paid he wants to get his money and I get it. I, I really, really do get it. But I just wish he was doing it in a different way. But those are just my thoughts. I would absolutely love to hear yours. What do you guys all think about Ayuk and how he's handling this? And what do you think about the 49ers and how they're handling it? You know, should they want Ayuk back? Um, should they move on from him? Are they being crazy for not already signing him and giving him, you know, all the money? Let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions. Let's get in some fights, but ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of, and I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much, and see you next time.